Okay, so the purpose of this video, we get a lot of customers that ask about rates, speeds, carbonation, why is my beer so foamy? What's the best way to fill the beer? What's the best way to set the machine up? So what I'm gonna show you here, this represents your Y valve, and these are the capillary tubes that run out to your filler machine. Now on a flex, you're gonna have six of these 3 16 draft beer line hoses. On a craft, you're going to have eight of them. So what you have to do is look at 3 16 inner diameter, and you want to, it's pi r squared equals the area. It's 0.028 square inches per tube. That's what the beer you have available. You multiply times the length to get the volume. Right now we're just looking at the square inches. So we take that 0.028, multiply it times six and eight, and get these two numbers respectively. That is basically what you can feed to those tubes. So what we wanna do is we have a lot of brewers, we like to have this hooked right up to your tank. That way you've got a large thermal mass of glycol chilled beer. The colder the, the beer or the beverage, whatever you're canning, the colder it is, the more stable it is. Now, temperature and parts of carbonation are the limiting factors to filling a can. So what you need to do is if you're gonna have a higher carb is you need a colder temperature. If you're gonna be above 2.6 parts of carbonation, you wanna be at freezing or almost slush. And then you wanna be able to push it with 14 or 15 PSI of head pressure. And that's gonna give you uh, speed at which your seamer head never turns off. So the goal here is to fill the cans and get them to the seamer head, get that next can in place of the feed sensor just before you're done seaming your lid or right at the time you're done so that the seamer never turns off. If you're at that, that speed on a flex, you're gonna do 24 cans a minute. That's what the seamer head's capable of running at maximum speed. The craft will do 30 cans a minute. It's imperative that you never let that seamer stop if you want to hit that rate. That your guys loading cans, they're keeping the lids full. It's very operator dependent, but the product dependent part you have to solve first. That's job one. We tell everybody skip the sight glass. Sight glasses, they, they're showing you beer. Guess what, you know you have beer in your tank. Why do you need to see it? What you should be doing before you can is keg first, because kegs just sit in a bar and they settle out, they crash out, they're cold. You're not dragging a keg around on the beach like you are a can. The can needs to be absolutely clean beer. So you wanna keg out first, I would use a sight glass for that. Once you know it's clean, get rid of the sight glass because all it does is harbor carbonation, pockets of carbonation, and it provides an area for the beer to absorb ambient temperature and lose its cold temperature that you've been working so hard to establish. Another thing is a lot of brewers will throw their beer in the night before and say, hey, it's at 32 degrees. There's thermoclines in your tank and your jackets on the outside. The core of the beer, different elevations in the beer, you might, I've seen 40 degrees in a tank that reads 32 at the thermometer. So get to know your equipment. Usually it takes a few days to get to 32 degrees if that's what you're shooting for. So now we're gonna go back to the brewer's hose. I get a lot of guys that set their machine up and they're trying to reach a tank that's 80 feet away. And they take one and a half inch brewer's hose, they stretch it out over a warm floor, sun's shining, garage doors are open, everything's hot. Well, all the beer that's sitting in this hose is getting warm. Problem is a one and a half inch diameter hose is too big. If you need a total of 0.224 square inches, you wanna really, on a craft, you want, really wanna use like a five eighths diameter hose, it's 0.3 square inches. It's a little bit more than what you need, that's all you want. So if you look at a one and a half inch brewer's hose, it's 1.76 square inches when you really only need 0.22. On a flex, it's even worse. You only need 0 0.16, 0 0.17. It's 10 times bigger than what you need. So you're pulling beer out of that hose every time you fill six cans, but the rest of it's just sitting in there getting warm. 
So while it's getting warm, CO2 is breaking out of suspension. That CO2 has to go somewhere. It goes to your filler head. The CO2 hits the high spots in this Y valve. That's why we tell you you have to rotate it all the time when you're purging it and bleeding it to get all the air pockets out of these little trap areas. But the number one thing, you have to take this brewer's hose and shrink it down. Just use the same type of material as found in a draft beer line. You can pick it up at like rapidsupply.com. Might even be able to find it on Home Depot's website. But it's just, you want a half inch hose for a flex, five eighths hose for a craft. And that will totally fix a lot of your issues. The next thing is maybe don't have the garage door open on a 110 degree day, because that, that also hurts you with the line laying on the floor. And if it is, maybe prop it up with some empty beer cans or something so that you don't get that thermal transmission happening. But um, that's, that's what you want to shoot for if you want to have stable fills.